Garrett James Hardin April 21, 1915, to September 14, 2003, was an American ecologist and philosopher who warned of the dangers of overpopulation. His exposition of the tragedy of the commons, in a famous 1968 paper in Science, called attention to the damage that innocent actions by individuals can inflict on the environment. He is also known for Hardin's first law of human ecology. We can never do merely one thing. Any intrusion into nature has numerous effects, many of which are unpredictable. Biography <inaudible> 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 Hardin received a B.S. in zoology from the University of Chicago in 1936 and a Ph.D. in microbiology from Stanford University in 1941 where his dissertation research addressed symbiosis among microorganisms. Moving to the University of California, Santa Barbara in 1946, he served there as professor of human ecology from 1963 until his nominal retirement in 1978. He was among the first members of the Society for General Systems Research. <laughs> Major works and positions A major focus of his career, and one to which he returned repeatedly, was the issue of human overpopulation. This led to writings on controversial subjects such as advocating abortion rights, which earned him criticism from the political right, and advocating eugenics by forced sterilization, and strict limits to non-Western immigration, which earned him criticism from the political left. In his essays, he also tackled subjects such as conservation and creationism. <laughs> Neomalthusian approach and tragedy of the commons In 1968 Hardin applied his conceptual model developed in his essay, The Tragedy of the Commons, to human population growth, the use of the Earth's natural resources, and the welfare state. His essay cited an 1833 pamphlet by the English economist William Forster Lloyd which included an example of herders sharing a common parcel of land, which would lead to overgrazing. Hardin blamed the welfare state for allowing the tragedy of the commons, where the state provides for children and supports overbreeding as a fundamental human right. Malthusian catastrophe is inevitable. Hardin stated in his analysis of the tragedy of the commons that, freedom in a commons brings ruin to all. However, environmental historians Joachim Radkow, Alfred Thomas Grove, and Oliver Rackham denounced Hardin as an American with no notion at all how commons actually work. In addition, Hardin's pessimistic outlook was subsequently contradicted by Eleanor Ostrom's later work on success of cooperative structures like the management of common land, for which she shared the 2009 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences with Oliver E. Williamson. In contrast to Hardin, they stated neither commons or «almende» in the generic nor classical meaning are bound to fail, to the contrary, «the wealth of the commons» has gained renewed interest in the scientific community. Hardin's work was also criticized as historically inaccurate in failing to account for the demographic transition, and for failing to distinguish between common property and open access resources. It should be noted that Lloyd's original example, rediscovered by Hardin, could only apply to unregulated use of land regarded as a common resource. Normally, rights of use of common land in England and Wales were, and still are, closely regulated, and available only to commoners. If excessive use was made of common land, for example in overgrazing, a common would be stinted. That is, a limit would be put on the number of animals each commoner was allowed to graze. These regulations were responsive to demographic and economic pressure, thus rather than let a common become degraded, access was restricted even further. Controls on usage can help mitigate the tragedy of the commons. Topic. Living within limits. In 1993, Garrett Hardin published Living Within Limits, Ecology, Economics, and Population Taboos, which he described at the time as a summation of all his previous works. The book won the 1993 Phi Beta Kappa Award in Science. In the book, he argues that the natural sciences are grounded in the concept of limits such as the speed of light, while social sciences, such as economics, are grounded in concepts that have no limits such as the widespread, infinite Earth, economic models. 
He notes that most of the more notable scientific as opposed to political debates concerning ecological economics are between natural scientists, such as Paul R. Ehrlich, and economists, such as Julian Simon, one of Ehrlich's most well-known and vocal detractors. A strong theme throughout the book is that economics, as a discipline, can be as much about mythology and ideology as it is about real science. Hardin goes on to label those who reflexively argue for growth as growth maniacs and argues against the institutional faith in exponential growth on a finite planet. Typical of Hardin's writing style, he illustrates exponential growth by way of a biblical metaphor. Using compound interest, or usury, he starts from the infamous 30 pieces of silver, and, using 5% compounded interest, finds that after around 2,000 years, Every man, woman, and child would be entitled to only, 160,000 earth masses of gold." As a consequence, he argues that any economy based on long-term compound interest must eventually fail due to the physical and mathematical impossibility of long-term exponential growth on a finite planet. Hardin writes, "...at this late date millions of people believe in the fertility of money with an ardor seldom accorded to traditional religious doctrines." He argues that, contrary to some socially motivated claims, population growth is also exponential growth, therefore even a little would be disastrous anywhere in the world, and that even the richest nations are not immune. Topic. Personal life Topic. Participation in death with dignity movement and suicide Hardin, who suffered from a heart disorder in the aftermath of childhood poliomyelitis, and his wife, Jane, who suffered from Lou Gehrig's disease, were members of End of Life Choices, formerly known as the Hemlock Society. Believing in individuals' choice of when to die, they committed suicide in their Santa Barbara home in September 2003, shortly after their 62nd wedding anniversary. He was 88 and she was 81. Topic. Controversy. Topic. Racist sentiments and association with white nationalism Hardin caused controversy for his support of anti-immigrant causes during his lifetime and possible connections to the white nationalist movement. The Southern Poverty Law Center noted that Hardin served on the board of the Federation for American Immigration Reform and Social Contract Press and co-founded the Anti-Immigratin Californians for Population Stabilization and the Environmental Fund, which according to the SPLC, "...served to lobby Congress for nativist and isolationist policies." In October 1974, he published the article, "...living on a lifeboat." In Bioscience magazine, arguing that contributing food to help the Ethiopian famine would add to overpopulation, which he considered the root of Ethiopia's problems, Hardin at points also supported racist and white nationalist thought. In 1994, he was one of 52 signatories on Mainstream Science on Intelligence, an editorial written by Linda Gottfriedson and published in the Wall Street Journal, which declared the consensus of the signing scholars on issues related to race and intelligence following the publication of the book The Bell Curve. It claimed that the average IQ among the African American population was only 85, amongst other pseudo-scientific and scientifically racist-based claims. On February 11, 1998, he debated Christian philosopher William Lane Craig at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Hardin's last book, *The Ostrich Factor: Our Population Myopia* (1999), a warning about the threat of overpopulation to the Earth's sustainable economic future, called for coercive constraints on unqualified reproductive rights, and argued that affirmative action is a form of racism. Topic. Publications Topic. Books 1965, Nature and Man's Fate New American Library. ISBN 0-451-61170-5 1972, Exploring New Ethics for Survival, The Voyage of the Spaceship Beagle Viking Press. ISBN 0-670-30268-6 1973, Stalking the Wild Taboo W. Kaufman. ISBN 0-913232-03-3 1974, Mandatory Motherhood, The True Meaning of Right to Life Beacon Press. 
ISBN 0-8070-2177-6 1977, The Limits of Altruism, An Ecologist's View of Survival Indiana University Press. ISBN 0-253-33435-7 1980, Promethean Ethics, Living with Death, Competition, and Triage University of Washington Press. ISBN 0-295-95717-4 1982, Naked Emperors, Essays of a Taboo Stalker William Kaufman, Inc. ISBN 0-86576-032-2 1985, Filters Against Folly, How to Survive Despite Economists, Ecologists, and the Merely Eloquent Viking Penguin. ISBN 0-678-0410-X 1993, Living Within Limits, Ecology, Economics, and Population Taboos Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-509385-2 1999, The Ostrich Factor, Our Population Myopia Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-512274-7 Topic. Selected journal articles Hardin, G. 1960. The Competitive Exclusion Principle. Science. 131 3409, 1292-1297. Bibcode, 1960 Sci. .131, 1292H. Doi 10.1126 Science.131.3409.1292. PMID 14,399,717. Hardin, G. The Tragedy of the Commons. Science, 162, 3859, 1243 1248. Bibcode, 1968 Sci. 162.1243H. doi 10.1126, science.162.3859.1243. PMID 5699198. Hardin, G. 1969. Not Peace, But Ecology. Brookhaven Symposia in Biology, 22-151-161. PMID 4906521. Hardin, G. 1970. Everybody's Guilty. The Ecological Dilemma. California Medicine. 113 5, 40-47. PMC 1501799. PMID 5485232. Commentary, Living on a Lifeboat. Bioscience. 24 561-568. Bibcode, 1985-BIASC, .35-499-W. doi, 10.2307, JSTOR 1296629. PMID 11661143. Hardin, Garrett Lifeboat Ethics, The Case Against Helping the Poor. Psychology Today, 838-43. Hardin, Garrett November 1976. Living with Faustian Bargain. Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. 32, 8, 25-29. ISSN 0096-3402. Hardin, G. 1980. Ecology and the Death of Providence. Zygon, 1557-68. doi, 10.1111-slash j.1467-9744.1980.tb.1 Hardin, G. 1982. Discriminating Altruisms. Zygon, 17 163-186. Doi 10.1111/slash j.1467-9744.1982.tb.1 Hardin, G. 1983. Is violence natural? Zygon. 18, 405-413.
doi 10.1111/j.1467-9744.1983.1 tb00524 x Hardin, G. Human Ecology, The Subversive, Conservative Science. Integrative and Comparative Biology. 25 469–476. doi, 101093 ICB, 25.2.469. Hardin, G. AIBS News. Bioscience. 36 599–606. Bibcode, 1985 bias, 35, 499W. doi, 10.2307, 1,310,194, of September 2018. JSTOR 1,310,194. Hardin, G. The Tragedy of the Unmanaged Commons. Trends in Ecology and Evolution. 9, 5, 199 doi, 10.1016-0169-5347-94-90097-3. PMID 21236819. Hardin, G. Essays on Science and Society, Extensions of The Tragedy of the Commons. Science. 280 682-683. Doi 10.1126 science.280.5364.682. Topic chapters in books 1993. The entire text of Garrett Hardin's Living Within Limits: Ecology, Economics, and Population Taboos, Chapter 8: Growth, real and spurious, reprinted at GarrettHardinSociety.org by permission of Oxford University Press, Inc. 1991. Paramount Positions in Ecological Economics, in Costanza, R. Editor Ecological Economics, The Science and Management of Sustainability, New York, Columbia University Press. ISBN 0-231-07562-6-1991. The Tragedy of the Unmanaged Commons, Population and the Disguises of Providence, in, R. V. Andelson, Editor, Commons Without Tragedy, London, Shefford Walwyn, pp. 162-185. ISBN 0-389-20958-9 U.S. Topic Awards Hardin's 1993 book Living Within Limits, Ecology, Economics, and Population Taboos, received the 1993 award in science from the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Topic see also Bioethics Commonize Costs Privatize Profits Game Earth System Science Human Overpopulation Lifeboat Ethics Multiculturalism Ratchet Effect Taboo Topic References Topic Further reading Locker, Fabian 2013. Cold War Pastures, Garrett Hardin and the Tragedy of the Commons PDF. Review de Histoire Moderne et Contemporaine. 61, 7-36. Hardin, Garrett 1985. Filters Against Folly, How to Survive Despite Economists, Ecologists, and the Merely Eloquent. Viking Penguin, Inc. ISBN 978-0670804108. External links The Garrett Hardin Society, includes interviews with Hardin in text and video format. The Tragedy of the Commons. Obituary at American Scientist Obituary in the New York Times Tributes at the Garrett Hardin Society Common Tragedy by Tim Harford